Hey, what's happening here? I'm baking a cake, but I keep burning it. I'm trying to control the oven temperature by switching it on and off, but I can't keep the temperature of the oven at the right value. Well, it seems that you are not very good at switching the heating on and off manually, so you need a feedback control system to control the temperature. I think I've heard of a popular feedback controller called PID, but I'm not really sure what that is. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, and it means that the control action is the sum of three contributions, one proportional to the control error, one proportional to the integral of the control error, and one proportional to the derivative of the control error. Ah, okay. But how does it work in practice, and how can I apply the PID to my own oven? Think about an example. You want to bake a cake and you want the temperature of your oven, which is now switched off, to achieve a desired temperature, say 180 degrees Celsius, in a short time but without exceeding this desired temperature. Once you start heating the oven, the temperature will increase. But given a certain time instant, how would you decide the amount of heat to be applied? That is, the value of your control action. Well, if the difference between the desired temperature and the current one is big, then I'd probably want to add a large amount of heat so that it heats up quickly. And if the difference is small, then I'd want to add less heat so that it doesn't get too hot. This is actually the proportional action. It is proportional to the control error, that is, the difference between the desired and the current temperature. That actually makes a lot of sense. So can I just do that and my cake will come out perfectly? There is a drawback in using only the proportional action. Think about when the required temperature is achieved. In this case, the error is zero, which means that the proportional action is also zero, and therefore the heating system will be switched off. But this is not what you should do to keep the temperature. Oh, that's right. If the heat shuts off, then the temperature would drop again until the error is large enough that the proportional action holds it steady. There would be a steady state error. In practice, a good choice for our current action also takes account of what has happened in the past. Hmm. Do you mean that if the error isn't increasing fast enough, or is stuck at some steady state value, then I would need to find a way to increase the control action to a higher value than just the proportional term? This is called the integral action term. It is dependent on the past control error. In mathematical terms, this can be captured effectively using the integral of the control error, that is, the area between the desired temperature and its measured values in the past. The extra control action depends upon the size of this area, so the bigger the area, the bigger the extra heating and vice versa. In many cases, using just proportional and integral is enough to get good control. But in some cases, we need more. I find an effective method is to decide the value of your control action based on what you predict will happen in the future. That makes sense. If I think that the temperature is increasing too rapidly and I would expect it to exceed the desired value, I would want to reduce heating before it overshoots. I definitely don't want to burn the cake again. In control terms, we call this derivative action as we predict overshoots by measuring the derivative. The actual control action is proportional to the slope of the control error. That is, in mathematical terms, it's derivative. The bigger the slope, the bigger the control action. So, if the temperature is increasing very rapidly, the control error will decrease very rapidly, and therefore the additional control action will be very negative, thus reducing the overall heat given to the oven. In this way, the cake will not burn. Ah, I can now see that PID controllers are very intuitive. I'm going to build one straight away from my oven. Now my cakes are perfect. Yes, in fact, they can be applied to a variety of applications. The oven is just one example of a temperature control problem. I guess you can't use the same PID controller for all of the applications. No, indeed. You have to modify the amount of each control action depending on the process you are controlling. You can do it through the three PID parameters, the proportional, integral, and derivative gains. The values have to be selected depending on the process and on the performance you want to achieve. This selection procedure is called tuning. It doesn't seem like an easy task. What if I get the values wrong? Well, 
Since the three actions are quite intuitive, it is not so difficult to choose the values safely. And you also have to take into account that you can avoid using all of them. You can just use a proportional controller, for example or a proportional integral controller, etc. Furthermore, there are the so-called tuning rules that allow you to determine suitable values of the PID parameters given a mathematical model of the process you are controlling. Now I understand why PID controllers are so widespread. If they are safe and easy to tune, then I imagine lots of people would want to use them. And there's more. Almost all the PID devices available in the market have so-called automatic tuning. They are able to automatically perform an experiment on the process to control, determine a mathematical model of it, and calculate suitable PID parameters based on that model. So my cake will always come out perfectly.